Public education is the largest portion of the state budget each year. New Mexico spends billions on its schools, but not always with the results it wants. In 2018, a state judge said New Mexico hasn't been providing an equitable education for English language learners, native and low income students. That's the Yazi Martinez case, and that decision drove spending last year in the form of money for extended learning and teacher raises. Is it enough? Joining me now is Charles Goodmacher. He's working with the NEA Teachers Union. He worked for the NEA Teachers Union for years. He's here on behalf of a group called Transform Education New Mexico that's been monitoring the state's response to that court decision. Now, we saw the teacher pay component of that last year, and again, raises are proposed for this year, Charles. Are they enough? No, they're not enough, okay. unfortunately. Um, the state knows the teacher shortage has enormous consequences for our students. Mm -hmm. uh, the state knows we need to improve education, get higher quality applicants, and, uh, and yet the, the raises are much appreciated that are suggested, but they're not enough to really change that big picture of the teacher shortage. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the plaintiffs in the case said they didn't feel the state had keyed in on important parts of uh, delivering a sufficient education to underserved students. Are policymakers not getting the message at this point, or do the changes that have been made need time to work through the system? Because we hear that a lot, that just needs a little more time. Well, I, I do think that the policymakers understand the severity of the problem mm -hmm. uh, and of the opportunities to resolve the problem. And the Transform Education Coalition has proposed a large number of bills, um, fewer this year than last year, but, uh, but to directly address the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the problem in sufficiently funding the schools, as we would like that to happen, mm -hmm. is not a lack of awareness of the need, but the political compromises that have to happen among the legislators and the governor's office when they have to consider all the other needs of the state. Right. Is that a function of not having a formally stated plan in your view? Is that part of the problem here? That is a part of the problem, that mm -hmm. there's no comprehensive plan for reform. There are some bills that would move us towards creating a comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. um, and, and that would certainly be a big step forward. Yeah. I'm curious about the impact of how this current administration has moved away from uh, much of the Martinez administration's evaluation structure and process. Yes. Has that muddied the waters a little bit, or is that actually something that's getting breaking through the clouds and getting a little more clarity? Actually? No, that's been breaking through the clouds. Okay. In your analogy, uh, teachers, most teachers across the state are extremely happy about that. It's, you know, the teacher shortage problem is caused by the two parts. One is low pay for the very difficult work done, mm -hmm. even intrinsically rewarding as it is. Um, so changing the teacher evaluation has made the working conditions a lot better for teachers throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Just so I'm clear, are there any specific bills you can point to that are out there right now that have been pre-filed or being talked about that would help the situation a little bit? Yeah, um, there's several. There's a mentorship bill, I think mm -hmm. it's HB 62, mm -hmm. um, House Majority Whip um, or Leader. Cheryl Williams Stapleton's the prime sponsor. There's other educators that are sponsors of that bill. Mm -hmm. That would provide money, $2,000 a year for mentors mm -hmm. to assist newer teachers uh, enter the profession. Major problem that impacts the teacher shortage is that when teachers are not very well prepared right. and provided that ongoing assistance in their first couple of years, they, they don't make it very long in the profession. Those who do get that ongoing support become successful. That's well documented. That's been out there for a lot of years. What, yes. What's your sense of that? Is, is that just to start the 2000? And would you like to see that in your organization, see that grow over time? Uh, be, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. but 2000 would be a wonderful start, yeah. very important. Currently, there is a law in the book that districts have to provide mentorship programs, but there's mm -hmm. no funding specifically for that. So mm -hmm. that bill is really important. Um, you know, on, on educator compensation, of course, we want to raise that that part of the equation, while the working conditions are getting a little better, um, also to attract more people in the, into the profession. And so, um, you know, we're aiming for a 10% raise. Speaker mm -hmm. Egoff call, uh, supported that call. Um, Legislative Finance Committee came with 3%, the governor with 4%, and we saw yesterday uh, educators, or the Education Study Committee, mm -hmm. um, both senators and House members, uh, had a um, spoke very strongly that they felt that their suggestions for the budget 
were not included in the LFC budget you know, by their fellow legislators. Right. So the Educator Study Committee um, legislators are calling for a 6% raise, which is certainly very reasonable and would be, we think, enough to say, here we are investing two years in a row substantially in teachers. Right. I'm curious about the numbers of students that are uh, in those teacher training programs as it stands now. Is there any, is any sense of that? Is there a hard number out there? Um, it's still extremely low. Yeah. My own niece uh, graduated from UNM education program, the December graduate. There were 20-something education graduates. Well, the engineering grads and the, so many, all the other departments had many, many more. Right. So it's a real problem that, that the, the pipeline isn't filling up. And so uh, we, we support a number of measures to, inc you know, to change that picture, mm -hmm. uh, including there's another bill, um, House Bill 84, Representative Figueroa from Albuquerque, a, a, uh, also an educator, is the sponsor of. And that would reduce a small bit the burden employees uh, in public schools have for their share of their health insurance premiums. Mm. Um, there's an inequity, if you will, between state employees and school employees. Um, Obviously, we don't want to change, sure. impact the state employees. We think you know that's good and they do important work, but we want to lift up the education employees so that the cost uh, burden for their health insurance is less. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about charter schools a little bit. There's yes. always a lot of talk out there about equity, co equity councils, a lot of different things out there. Tell us about what the situation is for your group when it comes to charter schools and how they get in balance with everybody else as well. Uh, well, Transform Education New Mexico, uh, we're about educating the students. Right. So whether it's a charter school or it's a traditional public school, that's not a uh, essential concern for the Transform Coalition. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm curious, what are you, for your group, what are you looking for for signs out there, out there, meaning Santa Fe, <laughs> uh, specific signals that will tell you that, you know, we're on our way successfully to meet Marti Mar this situation. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yazi Martinez, what, do you, what are you looking for out of this session necessarily? Well, looking for a great deal of uh, uh, the specific solutions, like I mentioned, that address the teacher pipeline for one, yeah. but also um, uh, in terms of recruiting people, encouraging people to get into education. It's critical that we get more of our young students, you know, high school now, who are in the communities to want to become educators so that they come back to their own communities and help their brothers, sisters, cousins, young, young mm -hmm. siblings, and so on, mm -hmm. um, get a good quality education. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, Judge Singleton passed away, uh, yes. um, regrettably, and you know, Judge Matthew Wilson is now on board with the case. It, it, do you sense any appreciable change because of that, or is things just status quo and we're working forward in spite of it all? Well, I'm not part of the legal team, okay. so I really don't have a personal insight. I, um, I'm not aware of any great concern mm -hmm. from the lawyers about that. Yeah. Well, the state is uh, considering giving underfunded districts a greater share of money they get under the federal impact mm -hmm. uh, program. But the districts that get that aid sa serve Native students, and the change will cost more, as we've all discovered. Is it a smart move for your group to... Yeah, yes, yeah. Transforms definitely supports this move Okay, um, because, well, everybody knows historically there's been a lot of under-resourcing uh, of our native communities um, and, and rural communities in general. There are some other just rural communities that are also impacted because of forest, <coughs> forest uh, land and other federal lands. Right. Um, so um, it, it is a great need and uh, we believe this would help redress some of the ongoing systemic problems that do tend to keep the keep student success down in our native communities right so there's also some bills other bills that would um, that, that would help um, the transform is solidly behind uh, what would be some of those yeah well um, one of them would um, provide some, make available some of the extended learning mm -hmm. monies mm -hmm. to the tribal education departments or the tribal governments to provide their own culturally and linguistically appropriate educational resources mm. to their students during the summertime. Mm -hmm. What's been the reaction to that proposal? That sounds interesting. I, I, we've talked about that a lot here yeah. in this studio. Has, has that right. been well received? So it, it hasn't been heard yet. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's just, just some individual responses. It, it, um, it runs up against the problems of the money 
Uh, so it's that those programs that are specifically aimed to build up the capacity in our tribal communities mm -hmm. and the schools serving the tribal communities, mm -hmm. um, most of them are not included in the budgets that were have been proposed so far. Mm -hmm. Charles Goodmacher, Transform, Transform Education New Mexico, thank you for sitting down with us. We really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you, Gene. Hope to see you again. Anytime. Yep.